This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on impact and causes of increasing incidence of flash floods and its prevention. The participants are Dr. C.K. Varshne, environmentalist, and Chetan Chauhan, journalist. As everybody knows, uh, the world is facing an era of climate change which has resulted in extreme weather events across the world and India is also equally affected because of this. This monsoon, as well as previous several monsoons, we have seen a large number of extreme rainfall events from uh, flooding in uh, Bangalore this year. It was Chennai last year. We have seen extreme rainfall in Lucknow in northeast also this year. We have with us Dr. Vashne to discuss the issue. Uh, Dr. Vashne, first of all, these extreme uh, rainfall events which are happening during the monsoon months in India, uh, how do you see them? Chetan, you know that global warming is a overriding issue and it is escalating on an everyday basis. This has resulted into many kinds of uh, abnormalities and distortions. Important among them is that uh, as the temperature rises, the air has greater capacity to hold more moisture. And as the cooling winds come, which are known as monsoon winds and so on, as they rise. Now, this extra moisture which they have collected during the dry summer, where the warming is very abnormal in many places, particularly in the north and even in the coastal areas. And thus, this extra moisture gets precipitated. And also, we must know that the timetable of rainfall is also shifted considerably because of the global issues created by the global warming and the climate change. And as a result, we find that uh, the monsoon pattern has changed. And now every episode of rain, though may be short, but brings very heavy downpour. What so-called the cloud burst, their numbers have increased. Now this is one factor. And also because of the warm temperature, the glaciers are also melting rapidly and thus discharging their water. So I think there are two, three more factors which really put together are really the cause of this excessive flooding on one hand. On the other hand, there are a large number of human factors, anthropogenic factors, which accentuates the flooding that we have observed both in urban areas, in coastal areas, in eastern Himalayas, and in the northern Himalayas, particularly in Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh. In fact, even in the Madhya Pradesh, we have found that there is a huge amount of uh, problem that has been created both in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh because of the heavy rains and because of the poor discharge of the rain. So I think the human factors, the important among them is the poor land use policy. And second thing is that uh, there is a great deal of encroachment over the low-lying areas which under normal conditions or in previous year used to accommodate large amount of these floodwaters. So that is another issue where the wetlands and the areas which were supposed to really hold this water and the river catchment areas have been progressively encouraged upon and urbanization is playing havoc on our rivers, catchment areas or floodplains. So I think the area that really was available for water to drain has been constructed and reducing and constrained and very much suffers because of this, the water gets accumulated. And the important point is that there has been a huge amount of deforestation that has gone on for one reason or the other. Expansion of agriculture is one where the low-lying areas has been put under plow. And at the same time, the large amount of road construction and urbanization of the hilly habitats have really shaken up the mountain and the hillocks and which has resulted into huge amount of landslides and the associated problems. So I think all this put together discharges water into the river, which is highly muddy. And as a result, we find that the carrying capacity of our rivers and drainage channels progressively gets reduced. And since they cannot carry the amount of rainfall that they receive or the catchment area receives, and as a result, it is spreads and results into a flood. In fact, factors are many. These are some of the very important factors which are further compounded by reckless mining and querying 
and for sand mining, both legal and illegal, unscientific mining, and these are some of the factors which are really playing havoc to the situation and uh, the rainfall pattern has changed, as you know, and is going to change even further. And that is a reason that we find that flood losses are mounting up and human misery is escalating. And the number of deaths, both of the human beings and the cattle and the wildlife is really surmounting and is really increasing from year to year. And our farmers suffer and they become economically to that end extent punished very severely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Vashnayan, but the important point in this is also how to see the dry days in the monsoon rising and where patches in the monsoon are also increasing. If you see, this year though the monsoon was above normal in most parts of the country, but we saw a large stretches in Uttar Pradesh and some parts in northern Bihar where there was sufficient rainfall. And we have been saying the data clearly shows that uh, the rainfall pattern, the peninsula of India is receiving more rainfall than normal, whereas the northern and the central India I have seen a reduction in rainfall if you see the data for the last 30 years or since 1980, which is a clearly an indication though the extreme weather events are rising, but the rainfall pattern within the country is also changing. The monsoon is not as widespread as it appears to be to the IMT data, but at certain places it is not raining as much as it is needed and some places raining so much that we are seeing annual floods on a regular basis, Kerala is one such example, the Western Ghats, uh, that belt is one such example. The changing rainfall pattern and compounded with extreme rainfall events, how difficult it will become in the coming years for the urban establishment or new cities which have come up, many of which have come upon the water bodies or the waterways or the channels for the uh, monsoon water to drain into the water systems. What a sort of a challenge is this? for uh, the governance and development, especially in urban areas, maybe like Bangalore, Chennai, Kerala. So what are the challenges you think? I think you have very rightly pointed out that the pattern of rainfall has greatly changed. And it is trying to really figure out uh, as to how it can get into equilibrium with the kind of changes that are taking place because of the excessive emission of greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide. Without going into those details, I would like to say that this is important to know that a large amount of our infrastructure gets destroyed because of this rain, as well as the amount of real estate. And, uh, you know, number of houses that have been destroyed and many other things that have happened are quite uh, telling. And this trend is likely to increase even further in the coming years. The question is that the drainage channels have been blocked and the surface hydrology has not been given the kind of attention that it should be given in our developmental plan. The most of the cities which are supposed to be the smart cities have very seriously suffered from flooding. And as a result, their normal economic activity and the normal social activity has been greatly affected. Not only this, the health issues have also cropped up because of the excessive water, dirty water, and the mixing of the water with the sewage. So all these problems are very serious problems. And all this damage that is because of the climate change has to be projected at the international scale. And I think the coming COP must really give a careful thought. I mean, look at our neighbor Pakistan, where three-fourths of the country was under really dealing with the kind of a flooding situation which they have never ever imagined. And I think that some amount of uh, humanitarian aid has come, but this is entirely different than the compensation that one needs in the developing countries in India and many other countries which are suffering because of the climate change. So I think this issue is very important and has to be taken up. It has got both national dimension, local dimension, as well as international dimension. And unless we really take this issue, and also there is a proper assessment of the loss has also not been ever taken. We have got uh, our teams of uh, NDRF which go and work very hard to rescue people and all that. But after these people have been rescued, they are left to their own fate, and which is not very, very 
happy situation. So I think that to pick up threads again after you have lost everything, you can imagine that what kind of plight that they suffer. So I think this has got a serious problem. It is going to dent our economic activity. It is going to dent the tourist flow to the country. And it is also going to dent the productivity of our agricultural land. So I think these okay. are some of the things which uh, we have yeah. to be very, very worried about. And we have to think very carefully that how we can, on a comprehensive basis, develop a land use plan and the flood management issues. Dr. Vashna, you know, you rightly raised the issue of climate change not being a problem of just India a global problem and we are suffering because of the huge number of emissions that the Western and the developed world had emitted much before this issue of climate change became a global issue. Recently, the Environment Minister, Mr. Bhupendra Yadav, also rightly pointed out that the developed world has to do much more. They have to pay for the fast-tracking of the change of economy to the greener economy and also to pay for the loss the countries like India and other developing world is bearing because of the climate change. Do you think that, uh, as a last comment, that the developed world has not done enough to help the developing world combat climate change? Absolutely, because they are not only witnessing this damage, but they are also really not very sensitive to this damage. Although they say that uh, we are a global community and all that. So I think uh, these are good statements, very nice statements, but fact of the matter is that on the ground, the situation is entirely different. You are absolutely right that for the last 15 to 20 years, this issue was there and it has been all the time sidetracked. And even this time, we are not sure whether it will be on the agenda at all because the agenda is still to be finalized. And unless this issue is put on the agenda, it is very unlikely that it is going to be discussed at the coming meeting. So I think first of all, it has to come on the agenda. And after it comes on the agenda, then we must get enough sympathy as well as commitment to these issues. And then it will take a quite a while before any damage grant will flow and how it will flow and when it will be given all these issues which remain uh, really hanging. So I think uh, the international community and particularly the developing countries have really owe morally as well as uh, from the point of view of humanitarian grounds to really share their burden of this uh, issue. In fact, they are the ones who are largely responsible for the kind of uh, misery that is inflicted on people who have hardly any contribution to make to the global warming. So I think here is an issue that some people are responsible for creating this kind of a situation which is so pressing and so damaging. On the other hand, those who are suffering have very little to do and they are only getting punished for somebody else's act many, many thousand kilometers away. And I think uh, this kind of a distortion is becoming increasingly visible at a global scale from different parts of the countries, particularly from the vulnerable countries. And India is also one of the vulnerable countries. And if you see the climate risk index, then you will find that India really has a very, very high risk from these kind of natural calamities. And therefore, uh, I think what uh, our minister, Sri Bhupendra Yadavji has said is absolutely correct and must be said with greatest amount of uh, conviction as well as force to the international community to remind them of their duties as well as to really seek from them the kind of support which they should provide for the people who are suffering on account of their act. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Vashne, I fully agree with you. We will have to live with these extreme weather events in the near future and the government needs to think of policies how to adapt to this extreme weather event. With this, with this Thanks a lot for being with us. Thank, Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on impact and causes of increasing incidence of flash floods and its prevention. The participants were Dr. C.K. Varshney, environmentalist, and Chetan Chohan, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official.